In this video, we're going to derive yet a, uh, another way of expressing Green's theorem in vector notation. First, we have to um, discuss what we mean by the divergence of a vector. Here is the del operator, and here we have a vector that has v1, v2, and v3 components. So we have this times unit vector i, unit vector j, and unit vector k. And each one of these components, v1, v2, and v3, can be some function of x, y, and z. Now, in earlier videos, we learned how to take the curl of the vector. Now, to take the divergence, that's just taking the dot product of the del operator with the vector. So, if we have del dot v, Taking this dot product, that would just be the partial of v1 with respect to x plus the partial of v2 with respect to y plus the partial of v3 with respect to z. So suppose that we had a vector so our vector v had these components, v equals say, x squared times y, that was the ith component, then we have minus x, y, z, that was the j component, plus y times z squared, that was the kth component. So the divergence of v would just be the dot product of this with a del operator, or it would be the partial of this with respect to x, plus the partial of that with respect to y, plus the partial of that with respect to z. So it's no more complicated than that. Let's see, this would be 2xy. taking the dot product of this with this, or just using our general formula. So the partial of, of our v1 component with respect to x is 2xy, then we'll have minus the partial of this with respect to y, minus xz, then we'll have plus the partial of that with respect to z, that would be 2yz. And that would be the divergence of the vector. As we'll see in future videos, um, the divergence of the vector does have special uh, physical significance. And again, we'll delve into that uh, in future videos. What we want to do for this video is remember that the general expression for the divergence of a vector, del dot v is this expression here. Okay, now let's say that we have a vector v and we're just in two dimensions. So v has a v1 component times i plus a v2 component times the unit vector j. And again, each of these can be a function of x and y, each of these components. Now, what we've been doing is taking the dot product of this with the uh, differential position vector as you saw in our previous videos, where dr is just dxi plus dyj. And we have that right here. Or there's a general demonstration of that. Let's say that 
we are going about this closed curve. Here is a position vector R1 and R2. Pretend they're very close together so that going from R1 to R2, there's a differential there, dr, which we have greatly amplified. And the dr, the differential position vector, will have a dx and a dy component, as we have expressed right here. Now, let's suppose that we construct a different vector. We'll construct it in such a way so that the j component of this will be the ith component of our new vector, and the jth component of our new vector will be minus dx this. So how does that work out? So let's go to here. dy, this is dy. So we want it now only in the ith direction, so it would be like this. And then dy, or the jth component, that's minus dx. So that would be going down like this. So we're going here and here, and then go like that. And this vector that we made, like this, if we take the dot product of this vector with this vector, it's zero. So this vector we call dn, because this is normal to dr. Also, the way that we constructed it, it points out from the interior of the curve. And again, let's just review how we did that. dr, of course, is just has a dx and a dy component. Now, for our normal vector, take the dy. That's going to be our ith component. So it will be like this. And now this dx minus that will be the jth component. So go down like this, that distance of dx. And this will be our new vector like this. And this vector dn is perpendicular to that. These are orthogonal, and it points away from the interior of the curve. So we have two vectors here or two differential vectors, I guess we could say. We have dr, and we also have dn. And dn, that is dyi minus dxj. Now, what we've been doing is, in the past, is we've been taking the dot product of our vector v with dr. Of course, v dot dr that would give us v1 dx plus v2 dy. But now let's take the dot product of our vector v with dn. So then what we'll have is here for the dx component, that will be this dot this, j dot j is one lib, minus v2x minus v2dx. And then i dot i will be plus v1 dy. Now, let's remember the general formula for Green's theorem. We have a closed line integral of pdx plus q dy, and that equals the double integral about the interior of this curve. And we have partial of q with respect to x minus the partial of p with respect to y. 
and we have dx dy. That's the general form for Green's theorem, and we had a couple of videos where we went into this in some detail, and then we worked some problems too, some specific examples um, with Green's theorem. But now let's look at our integral here. If we had this v dot dn, and well if we had it like this then say take the closed integral of minus v2 dx plus v1 dy about some closed curve, then that will equal Now here, this right here, we multiply dy is what we in general call q. What we multiply dx by is in general what we call p. So here then, this will be the partial of q. That's this, v1. So we have the partial of v1. with respect to x. Then we have minus the partial of p. Now p is the what dx is being multiplied by, that's minus v2, with respect to y. So if a minus a minus that will be plus the partial of v2 with respect to y dx dy. Let's just look at how we did that. The partial q, that's what we're multiplying dy by, which is v1. So the partial q with respect to x, partial of v1 with respect to x. The partial of p, p is what we multiply dx by, that's minus v2. Minus, minus, plus, and then we have the partial of v2 with respect to y. So we have the partial of v1 with respect to x plus the partial of v2 with respect to y. And in just two dimensions, this right here, that is the divergence of our vector v. Remember, if we had the del operator just in the xy plane, there's the del operator. Take the dot product of this with the vector v. And that will give us the partial of v1 with respect to x, right here, plus the partial of v2 with respect to y, right here. And the divergence del dot v, we sometimes write that as divergence of the vector v. We can write it like that. So here then we have another way of expressing Green's theorem. What this was though was we were taking the closed integral of this, the closed line integral of this, but that would be the same thing in vector form as the closed line integral of this. So we have the closed line integral of v dot dn equals the double integral of the divergence of v dx dy. And this is yet another way then of expressing Green's theorem in the plane. So in vector form, right now we have two ways of expressing Green's theorem what we just derived right here, and then what we had in the previous video. 
and we should put an arrow on this because this is a vector that we're taking the divergence of. In the previous video, we had this kind of expression. We're taking v dot. This is the differential position vector. We have dr, and then we also constructed this differential normal vector. What we did in the last video was v dot dr equals the double integral where we had the curl of the vector v dot that differential element of area where this is perpendicular to the curve that in to this closed curve. Again, we discussed that in the previous video. But then here are two different ways of expressing Green's theorem in the plane in vector form. And these will be important to us later on. This will be important to us when we discuss the divergence theorem in some detail. And this will be important to us in the future videos when we discuss Stokes' theorem. Okay, that's it for this video then. Um, the playlist for these videos for the vector analysis is at the website digital-university.org.